Wyndham Clark won under 67. Let's talk about that putt on 18. Obviously meant a lot um, to you. We saw the fist pump. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's. I wanted to be in the final group. Um, every shot matters out here, and so. And, and, and on top of it, we couldn't see. So it was um, just the fact making it when we were kind of just feeling it and um, didn't really have the clearest of reads. So, yeah, there's a lot of emotion. It's a U.S. Open, and uh, I wanted to be in that final group. So, yeah. So it goes to say that you knew where you were on the leaderboard? Yeah, I mean, I'm not a huge scoreboard watcher, but walking up there, I kind of knew where we were at. And so um, I really wanted to be in that final group. We'll go here to Sean. Your first time in this final group major weekend setting how do you feel you handled it I felt like it was great I mean I I played really good I the front nine I kind of had it going I was um, a couple loose shots on um, on six not getting up and down there for birdie and then not burning the par five um, but I, I handled I felt like I handled all of it really well I had two back-to-back -back bogeys which were unfortunate but followed up by a great birdie and then burning it at the end I felt like I handled all the adversity and um, I feel like my best round is, is still out there. We'll stay here with Sean. As an Oklahoma State guy, what has Ricky meant to you, and then especially in inspiring the putter? Yeah, um, well, honestly, Ricky's, I'd say, one of the, if, if not the best um, Oklahoma State alum as far as he's was so involved with the team. He always comes back. He gives his time. He talked to us multiple times while we were in college. Um, and then even when I came out here, he's always, um, you know, send me notes of good playing or um, even some tournaments he would tell me, hey, I think this is a better play to play off the tee. So Ricky's a, a class act and, and a great cowboy and i um, fortunate to have him as my friend. And then as far as the putter, it's um, we were playing at Medalist where he belongs in uh, in Florida and I hadn't been punting good. And this was right before Bay Hill. And I played with Ricky, and he just made every single putt. And so I, afterwards, we were practicing a little bit, getting ready for it. And um, I hit a couple, and I was like, oh, gosh, this is really nice. So I texted the, uh, the Odyssey guy, and I said, hey, can you make me Ricky's putter? And he's like, well, what specs? I said, the exact same. And uh, so literally, I had the exact same putter. And I joked with Ricky today, he changed the grip. He changed the grip and cut it an inch. So I said, OK, I got to change the grip and cut it an inch. So <laughs> Back right. Hi, Wyndham. Um, take us back to your childhood as a very young golfer. You're out there you're, you, with your buddies, with your friends. You're lining up a putt, <clears throat> dreaming of winning the sport's biggest prizes. What for you personally, what was that dream? Um, well, I can remember a lot of times uh, I grew up playing at Cherry Hills Country Club, and they have a putting green right by the 10th tee, and I'd be out there putting till dark. And, yeah, you do that. I mean, you have putts just like I did on 18 where you can half see it, half can't, and, and you're, no one's out there and you're just calling out, um, you know, whatever tournament it is to win. And so I've done it many times. So it's uh, a little surreal to do it. Um, you know, obviously it's a Saturday, but it's a little surreal to be in this situation. And honestly, I'm just really excited and looking forward to tomorrow and the challenge that it's going to bring. And, and uh, hopefully it's my day. Left to Dylan. Are you always a, a big club twirl guy? Because that one on 18 <laughs> was pretty ferocious. <laughs> yeah, you're not the first one to say it. Um, no, I, I don't twirl too often. Um, the nice thing was I, I hadn't hit too many good shots in the last, like, five holes, and um, it was a perfect number, and I knew it was going to be at least somewhere near around the cup. And so, yeah, I twirled it. It was kind of in the moment, and um, obviously the shot worked out. So, I mean, I'm not one that twirls that often, but when the shot calls for it, I do it. Yeah. Are you an emotional player in general or pretty flat line? Where do you fall on that spectrum? Well, I mean, if, if you think I'm flatlined out there, it's, I'm not. I'm pretty, I'm very emotional. Um, I try to keep my emotions very uh, level just because I think that's how I play my best. Um, but yeah, I mean, deep down inside, I want to fist pump every time I make a putt and, and talk trash and, and whatever. But um, I try to keep it as level as possible because that's how I play my best. We're going to go right to Dave. Yeah, when I'm, uh, how big was a bogey on 17? How big was it? How big was it? Yeah, it was huge. Um, you know, it's it's a tough it's a tough pin for me. I hit a cut. I it was hard to see. I didn't feel comfortable drawing it into that flag. And obviously, to the right is the miss. If you miss in the left bunker, it's pretty much auto bogey as well. And so when I hit it, I I didn't like my shot, but I thought I was just going to be in the flat in that hazard, which we did hit practice shots 
on Tuesday and Wednesday, and I was like, oh, you can actually get it up and down from here, barring getting a bad lie. And unfortunately, it kicked and went into a terrible spot. Um, and so my caddy and I, just, it was an easy decision. It's like, we can't hit this on the green, so it's going to go to here, so we might as well just drop and try to get up and down from there. So making bogey didn't cost us the tournament, and, and I, I actually was one of the biggest points of today. You seem very calm making that bogey putt. What keeps you calm on the golf course? What, what do you fall back on? Um, I mean, I just kind of try to stay within myself and, and um, not let any one shot dictate the next one. And so the minute I make that one, I'm on to the next one. And um, so I just try to just try to stay within myself and focus on my mental goals and and uh, and let the shots take care of themselves. Do you more of a front left to Brentley? Uh, tomorrow's Father's Day. I um, just want to know how big of a role your dad played in getting you prepared for a moment like the one you're going to face tomorrow. Yeah, my, I mean, my dad was definitely the one that my, my mom first took me to play golf, but my dad was the one that really got me into golf. Um, he picked it up just a few years prior to me starting at the age of three. And um, I mean, every time I'd go golf at a young age was with my dad. Um, there's so many memories of us leaving at 6 a.m., our family on like a family vacation and we'd play golf and come back before noon. And that was the only way our mom, you know, my mom would let us do that. And so, so we had a bunch of, um, there's a ton of memories. And then he took me to tournaments and, you know, my dad played professional tennis, so he's an athlete and he gets it. And so he, he instilled in me hard work and discipline. And, um, I feel like I get a lot of my, um, fieriness from him. Um, and so he's, he's given me a lot. I mean, my dad, uh, is a big reason of why I'm out here. So hopefully, hopefully tomorrow can be a great Father's Day for him. Front right. You mentioned, <coughs> excuse me. You mentioned the darkness. Uh, when did that start affecting you guys? And would you like to see earlier tee times uh, tomorrow so it doesn't impact Sunday? Yeah, I mean, it, it's uh, it's a little ridiculous that we teed off that late. Um, I would say right around hole 15 or 16, it started getting to where you couldn't see that well. And I mean, I don't personally understand why we teed off. I mean, we played twilight golf. I mean, at the end, it was, I mean, the last two holes, I 100% think my bogey on 17 was because I couldn't see, and I think Ricky's bogey on 18 was because he couldn't see. So um, I'd like to see us go off an hour and a half, two hours earlier. I don't, and, then, you know, if we had a playoff tomorrow, we wouldn't be able to play the playoff because it's so dark. So, um, you know, with that, I, and I'm not trying to make an excuse, but it definitely was a challenge. I mean, 17, 18, I, like my putt on 17, I, I literally couldn't see it. And we just played, you know, off of feel and how Ricky's putt came in. And then my putt on 18, same thing. John was like, well, it's kind of around here. Make sure you hit it soft because we, you know, we need to, we don't want to blow this by. We need to tap it and come in. So, you know, it's kind of tough and it's crazy to think that we're doing that on the last two holes of a major when we could have teed off two hours earlier. But um, so hopefully tomorrow we don't have that issue. Two more left to James. Uh, when have you mentioned you have pretty good relationship with Ricky? I'm wondering what's something that uh, maybe the public would be surprised to learn about him? With, with Ricky? Yeah. Um, you know, Ricky's a little older than me, so a lot of our relationship was more me a little bit idolizing him, and he was a role model and someone I aspire to be. Um, I mean, we've had a lot of fun times in Stillwater together when he came back. I've played a good amount of, of you know, of golf with Ricky. I'm, I'm trying to think of a specific... Um, specific memory I mean honestly one of the funnier things is just the fact that I'm using his putter and we kind of had a, uh, a running bet with um, Joe Toulon who's the Odyssey guy of who would be the first one to win with the putter and uh, I, I fortunately got that one at, at Wells and um, but we've kind of started a little trend out here of guys using using the putter so you know I, I have the utmost respect for Ricky last question Todd Going back to your comments about finishing late, I mean, obviously you guys know that it's TV, right? But do you feel like it should be a little bit more important as far as how you guys perform than when it finishes for the East Coast time zone? Yeah, I mean, it's TV, it's TV but it's, I mean, what is it, midnight in the East Coast? I still don't, I mean, personally, I don't quite understand it. Um, I know we're West Coast and whatnot, and I know they probably have the say, but I would would like to think that they would step in and be like, hey, we want to make sure it's in the light and we have time. And, um, you know, definitely Ricky and I had a little bit of a disadvantage on those last two holes playing it in the dark. Um, so, you know, that's all I have to say on that. I, I've never really played 
a final round of any tournament in the dark. I have in my you know, first few years on tour, I'm the last tee time off, and there's many times when we're trying to finish our last hole and I have to come back the next day. But it is crazy to think that we almost, I mean, honestly, we both could have called it if we wanted to on that putting green and said, hey, I can't see, and we play tomorrow. And that, I think that would look pretty poorly on both, uh, both sides of it. Thanks for your time. Good luck tomorrow. Yeah, thanks, guys.